Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, October 18th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today wrote up a fileless PowerShell dropper. Now, fileless, well, uh, usually doesn't mean zero files, but it minimizes interaction with the file system by actually using registry keys, which of course is fairly common. The keys in this case look random, but are always the same for this malware. So makes real nice specific indicators of compromise if you want to look for it. While the dropper is creating and reading the register keys, it has pretty low virus total scores. However, it will then install a DLL and that one does have a decent recognition among the anti-malware tools in virus total. But again, that's a little bit of the point here. The dropper itself is of course the part that's sort of then more consistent and persistent on the system. If a particular uh, malware that's being installed by the dropper does have a uh, high recognition, then an attacker could easily swap it out for something else. And yet again, we have a remote code execution vulnerability in a frequently used Java library. This time it is uh, Apache Commons text and version 1.5 through 1.9 is vulnerable. The Library is used to process uh, text uh, strings essentially. And one of the features is its ability to interpolate, to basically expand little macros sort of that you can define it. And one of uh, these interpolations is a URL that will then write a file to the file system that is loaded from that URL. Uh, proof of concept exploit has already been published and it's actually a real straightforward vulnerability because it just uh, uses a particular feature, not necessarily sort of an exploit per se. However, uh, how much this affects a particular application really depends. And uh, people already have compared this to log4j. Somewhat true, I think, uh, because it is a very popular Java library, but it uh, really depends on how you're using this library and uh, how, which features actually are using. And here in particular, the interpolator string lookup function is what then sort of resolves these URLs. Version 1.10 was released on September 24th. And in this version, the sort of problematic interpolations are uh, disabled by default. So Basically not really sort of a fix. Again, it's not really a vulnerability. It's really just a stupid feature that they no longer sort of enable by default if you're calling this interpolation uh, function. Particular more sophisticated malware has been using a vulnerable drivers to escalate privileges in recent years. The trick usually involves installing a legitimate driver that is maybe out of date, doesn't really have to be out of date, but has some known vulnerability. And this will then allow an attacker to exploit the vulnerability to escalate uh, privileges. Because the original driver is valid, it's uh, digitally signed and everything, it usually installs just fine without a little warning. So to help with this problem back in March of 2020, Microsoft announced a new feature in Windows that uh, will basically have a block list of known vulnerable drivers and prevent you from installing them. And the idea is in particular, if it's an out of date driver, uh, Windows will basically just uh, install the current and hopefully non vulnerable version of the driver. So the attacker wouldn't be able to take advantage of old versions of drivers with known vulnerabilities. Well, uh, sadly, it looks like this feature, uh, while it was big advertised and has been advertised a couple times since the initial release, has actually not really been maintained as well as it sort of was advertised. Will Dorman uh, found out and uh, reported via Twitter last week that the 
block list for Windows 10 appears to have been updated last in 2019. The block list for Windows Server 2019 actually only includes two different drivers. Now, since then, uh, Microsoft has acknowledged the problem uh, with the update process and said they're working sort of on a real fix. They also released a special tool that you can use to manually update the list. The problem really seems to be more that, well, Microsoft updated the list, but the list was never then actually being applied to the operating system. Uh, Will Dorman also has released a simpler sort of PowerShell one-liner that you can copy paste to update the list and force the updates to happen. I will be linking to a good article by Dan Gooden that summarizes all of this and includes the different workarounds. Well, um, that's it for today. Our five and so minutes are up. Uh, thanks for listening. As usual, if you like this podcast, please subscribe and let your friends know about it. Good reviews with your favorite podcast app are always welcome. Any feedback, um, anything I should change, uh, please let me know. And uh, this uh, podcast is actually available via many different outlets, including the Alexa Flash News uh, Briefing feature. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.